Hi, I'm Echo with Echoes of Nature. Thanks for joining us today with the Prince George's County Memorial Library System Summer Program. And today our program is called Confusing Camouflage. And we're going to talk a little bit about camouflage, meet a couple of animals that are awesome at camouflage, and I have a craft and an activity that you'll be able to do at the end if you wish. If you're not familiar with Echoes of Nature, we are a local nonprofit that goes into the schools, early childhood centers, adult centers, birthday parties, special events, libraries, and we present our programs with live animal ambassadors. Most of our ambassadors come to us from shelters and rescues and we adopt them to use for education programs. So these animals are used to being up close, being seen by folks they've never met before, and possibly being touched. So today, because we're doing camouflage, what does camouflage mean? Who said being able to hide? So these animals are gonna be able to hide or blend in so they're not easily seen. Why would you not want to be seen? Why would you want to be hidden or blended in your surroundings? Who said so they can't be found by other animals? So a predator can't find a prey item. What about the predator wanting to hide from a prey item so they can sneak up on it better? To be able to be hidden to stay safe? And those are some good ideas and some other ideas are out there too. And the first camouflage animal I want to share with you is one that you may find this summer in and around your yards. So what animal is an amphibian? So it leads a double life and it sits kind of like this. Maybe you find it sitting in your garden or in your yard. Who said frog or toad? So both of those would work for that. Today we're going to take a look at American toad and I'm going to bring her out. So I'm going to take her out of her enclosure so we can see her. So here she is. I'm going to turn her back to you so you can see her pretty back. So when you look at her, she's covered in warts. These warts are not caused by a virus and they're not gonna give me warts. If that was the case, I'd be totally covered. But I know she's an American toad because in each of the really dark circles that are flat on her skin, she only has one or two large warts in those dark spots. If you take a look at her eyes, they're kind of a football shape kind of a goldeny bronze color. Right behind her eyes are two really large glands that are the peritonoid glands. And these, if a toad is disturbed, um, scared, being chewed on by a dog or a fox, they can release a nasty ta tasting toxin from those glands and it'll make that animal drop them. I've never had one of our toads do that. They get used to being handled, but you don't want to just go and pick up all the toads and harass them. Now, she has an awesomely large mouth. Right behind her eye, too, and under that large gland, you may see a circle. Of course, now you're moving. You may see a circle. That is her ear. That's her eardrum. So... Mammals, like us, get the fancy ears, but amphibians have those flat circles right behind their eyes, and she hears really well, but her mouth starts right about where her ear is, and it goes all the way around. You've heard the expression grinning from ear to ear. And usually that means we're really, really happy. Maybe we just got a really cool surprise or a really cool present. And that means, you know, we're grinning really big. But for a frog or a toad, that means they can eat anything that's inside of their area that they think can fit in their mouth. 
and we can see if she will eat for us because she looks like she's trying to go for the camera right now. I'm going to put a couple of mealworms in front of her and we'll see if she will see those and no, nope, not that way. If she will spot them and go for them. Oh, I think she sees them. Wow, she got two for one. So, did you see that tongue stick out? It was really super quick. It flips out. It doesn't stick out like our tongue. It's a little bit sticky. And she will also use her front hands to push her food in her mouth if she can't get it all in at once. Did you notice that her eyes pushed down? Watch this time and take a look at her eyes. Watch how they push down. And you can't see it on this side, but she's got one toe that's twitching like a cat's tail would. So she's kind of excited at the moment. Do you want any more? There you go. I know, it's not wiggling so much. I don't think three is big enough for you. You usually eat way more. So we feed them crickets here as well as the mealworms. In the wild, they would eat lots of different insects. There we go. That one's moving. So one of her eyes went down on this one. But if I gently touch her eye, do you see how it goes down? I'm not pushing on her eye. She's blinking, and it's taking that in. When you look at a skull of a toad, it actually, you can see all the way from the top all the way down through the bottom. Now, can we do that with a human skull? No. So we have bone that goes around our eye sockets that help protect our eyes. But if you were a frog or a toad, you'd actually use your eyes to help you to eat. And those, when she pushes the eyes down, that's pushing the food from her mouth to her stomach because she can't swallow. We have throat muscles. If you put your hands at your throat and gently swallow, can you feel those muscles move? So we have muscles to help us make that food go down, but frogs and toads don't have that. So they need to use their eyes like a plunger and push it down. How many of you like to watch movies and eat popcorn? And if you like to do that like me, because it's a really special treat, I tend to eat the popcorn continuously. Well, now imagine if you ate popcorn while watching a movie, but you ate like a frog or a toad. Every time you put a piece of popcorn in your mouth, your eyes would push that popcorn down. So you'd hear the movie, but you wouldn't see the movie. If you take a look at her colors, they're going to help her to blend in or to camouflage. I've put her on a light colored towel right now. But imagine if she was sitting in leaves or around pine cones. She's going to blend in pretty well that way. She's going to be hard to see, especially if she's kind of under. So they are super at camouflage. She is an ambush hunter. So she's going to sit and wait for her food to come close to her. Because in the wild, mealworms don't just suddenly drop down in front of you like it did for her little treat right there. So she's going to sit and wait for food. In the wild, they're going to eat smaller frogs and toads. They'll eat small lizards. Crickets, beetles, spiders, slugs, worms. The only way they're going to go for flies is if the fly is walking on the ground. Because as you saw, her tongue only stuck out about this far. So she's not going to be able to catch something flying up in the air. But she is going to be an awesome hunter on the ground. As a toad, she has short hoppy legs. You've seen her walking. A little bit. And this is also why I'm able to leave her on the table like this. If she had frog legs, which were longer for jumping far distances, I wouldn't be able to do that with the frog because it would be gone. But there she goes. So she's walking. And she'll do a little hopping. 
and her toes are long, but she does not have the webbing between the toes like our swimming frogs do, like bullfrogs, green frogs, leopard frogs. So that is really cool. I hope you find some toads in your neighborhood. We have two types of toads here in Maryland, two true toads. We have the American toad and the Fowler's toad. This one is a female, and one way I know that is her size. Males are usually a little bit smaller, and there's a couple other distinctions that can help me figure that out, but they're really fun to listen to in the evenings. They're one of the ones that make the trilling sounds, and it's the boys calling to the girls to say, hey, I'm big and strong. So I'm going to put her back, and I hope you guys... Take a look out for some toads in your gardens or flower beds. Sometimes we find them around our front porch because they are coming out to eat the bugs that are attracted to the window lights. Toads are awesome to have in your yards because they take care of a lot of the nasty pests we don't like to have around. Another animal that I'd like to share with you that is really good at camouflage is in this bin. And I'll get them out. These are an insect. Now you may be going, I only see a stick. But on, also in there, are walking stick insects. Now these are young Vietnamese walking stick insects, but they look very similar to our North American walking stick insects. These are younger. They are going to get a little bit darker and a little larger, but this is probably about a good size for our North American ones. When you look, there are six legs. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Those front ones look like antenna or moving around. They're actually their front legs. Their heads have little tiny short antenna. Their heads also make me think of little alien heads. But now she's hanging on the stick. And notice how still she got. She is trying to camouflage, to blend in, as if she is part of this stick. And when the wind blows, you know how the branches and the little twigs and the leaves kind of move in the wind? They will, too, to try and mimic that they really are a leaf or a stick blowing on in the wind. These guys are herbivores, so they eat only plants. American toads, if they did find a North American walking stick, would think it would be a tasty treat on the ground. But these guys are usually found up in the trees. And they're going to be in our native trees, like our maples and our oaks, and eating on the leaves, our native ones. But they are really cool insects. Their bodies... It's hard to tell that they have the three body parts like an insect, the head, thorax, and abdomen, because they're so long, they're designed differently in that respect. But their legs are all attached to their thorax, and then the abdomen is on the end, and they've got that small head. So imagine if you were walking in your yard or in the park and... You're looking up and looking at all the pretty leaves. You may also be seeing some walking stick insects, but not realizing it because they're super camouflaged. Now I'm going to share um, a craft in a moment. I'm going to get out the second walking stick and put over here too. And they'll put those front legs right out in front 
to try and be the skinny part of the branch. These do not have wings, so they are not flyers, so they're going to be walkers. So hopefully you guys are lucky and maybe you'll find one of these on a tree branch. One of our native walking sticks. So I'm going to put these two back and I'm going to share with you our craft ideas. All right. So they're moving around a little bit because their branch suddenly started moving. Can you think of any other animals that may be super good at camouflage? Now I know I have a couple of pictures uh, behind me that show some animals that might use some camouflage. And how many of you have ever spotted one of our wild rabbits? Maybe they are hiding in the shadow. Did you see them because of their colors or because they moved and you caught the motion? And those are fun to look out for. So one of our crafts today is, our craft ideas, is making your own camouflage toad at the end of this as well as on our website there will be a coloring page of the toad that I used or you're welcome to draw your own toad or look up other pictures of toads to use and what I did was I colored my toad and then I cut around it and I put it on a background I, I did a sky I did grass I did scraps of greens and browns to make grasses and rocks and I also made some of it look a little bit more 3D with it being sticking up so it's not totally flat on the paper and to make the bump stick up on the toad I used dried beans so for this one I used black eyed peas and lima bean but you could use any of the dried beans that you may have and you only need a few and the paper part you can definitely use glue sticks but to put the beans on you will need um, school glue the liquid glue so it will stick and then do let it dry well before you hold it up or your beans may roll off you can also add leaves and the pine needles and sticks to really make your picture look like your toad is outside. You can also use acorns and the acorn caps and this will just help your picture look really awesome as well. So I hope you have fun with this and I look forward to seeing some of these crafts if you post them with the library and I'm sure the librarians would love to see some of those too. I have another craft game and this one is my camouflage moth game. So on the website there will be a page that has moth or butterfly outlines and I call it my moth game because usually it is the moths that are the more camouflaged than our daytime butterflies with their bright colors. So what you would do is cut out your moths. And I turned mine over so you couldn't see the black line that helped me cut it out. And then you can color it any way you want to. And this is a great game to play with your brothers and sisters, with your mom and dad, your grandparents. A really fun, cool game. Couple of rules. You cannot put the picture 
under something. Because if it's under something, no one can see it. That's not the definition of camouflage. Camouflage is blending in or hiding in plain sight. So if I wanted to make it blend in on my shirt, what color would I need to color him? So I'd need to color him a dark green. If I wanted him to blend into the towel, it would be a pale peachy color. If I wanted it to blend in on my toad, I would need to color it some browns and give it some spots. If I wanted it to camouflage on the toad container that I have today, I would color it pink. And the idea is to blend in and hide in plain sight. So people walk right by your moth and never notice it because you've colored it in a way that it is camouflaged. Now, I do have some moths that I colored behind me. And I'm going to move out of the way and I want you to take a look at the background behind me and see if you can find the five moths that I put up. So I'm going to move right out of the way. So there are five moths. Actually four moths because one of my pictures fell. And can you find all four moths. I'll take a couple of moments for you to look at it. So who found the moth on the snowshoe hair? So I didn't even need to color that when I left it white. Snowshoe hairs are really cool at camouflage because in the winter they turn into a white fur coat. Why would they need a white coat in the winter time? So they can hide in the snow. Now right above this one is one that I decorated to blend into the background, the fabric. If we take a look at our picture on our banner, there was one right on top of the opossum head. And a little further over to the right, we have our green one to hang out on our banner. And I'm going to snag our owl picture. So I did my owl. I put one on him to blend in with the feathers. And if you take a look at the owl, Imagine if he closed his eyes, how closely he would look like the tree bark. So owls are amazing at camouflage. They can be sitting out during the day asleep, and we may not see them because they are awesome at that camouflage. And I'm gonna... I challenge you to create some awesome camouflage moths. I hope you have fun with the game. It can be a lot of fun, but remember, you can't hide it under something. You can't put it in something where somebody walking by can't see it. Because the name of the game is Camouflage, to blend in in plain sight. I hope you have a ton of fun with that. You can play it inside and outside. And I challenge you also to take a look at who's great at camouflaging in your neighborhoods. What animals seem to blend in and you see them because you see them moving. Take a look at their colors. What's gonna help them to blend in and hide? I hope you check out the library for books on camouflage. They have some really awesome ones. And I look forward to seeing you later and sharing some more of our animal ambassadors, either at the library or with one of our other programs. And our pages will be up on our website as well. They will be at the end of this video too for you to check out. And we look forward to having you at the libraries and checking us out. Thanks so much. Bye.